Tina Kotek, a progressive Democrat, became Oregon's 39th governor today. She's just the third female governor in state history and one of the country's first openly lesbian governors. Not the first, but one of the first. Here's a bit of her swearing in today in Salem. I, Tina Kotek. I, Tina Kotek. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution and the Constitution of the state of Oregon of the state of Oregon and that I will faithfully and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of governor discharge the duties of governor. The new governor took the oath there with her wife Amy Wilson at her side. State Supreme Court Chief Justice Megan Flynn did the honors. During her inaugural address, Governor Kotek talked about her family and her motivation to make a difference. My grandparents were immigrants. My parents were proud first-generation Americans who believed in hard work and being engaged in their community. My mom, her name was Florence, volunteered at the library in my elementary school. After he retired, my dad, Jerry, volunteered on the local school board, not the school board, the zoning board. They did what they could to make things better for our family and for our community. When I was in my 20s, I fought for domestic partnership benefits for faculty and students at the University of Washington. That was a positive change for couples who had been denied for too long the dignity and respect everyone deserves. By the way, I love showing you these longer comments, sound bites, we call them like this. It's the kind of stuff that I really enjoyed when I was covering the state legislature. You get to hear that if you're sitting there, but in a regular newscast, we give you just short sound bites, like 10 seconds, because we don't have time. Well, on this newscast, we're different. Thank you for watching. We're going to give you these longer pieces. Governor Kotek urged lawmakers to work for the good of all Oregonians, and she said she's going to conduct a listening tour in every county. She also quoted a surprising source of inspiration. Governor Vicatia made a similar commitment in 1979. Here's what he said in his inaugural address. Quote, I have and will continue to listen, and not just only to those people who have the means and the urgency to press their case in Salem. I will go to our people to listen. I will go to every county of this state. I will be in your own communities, not talking to you, but meeting with you. I will listen to you, the elected representatives of our people, and to the many dedicated workers in our government who truly want to serve people. I will listen to all." Unquote. It may surprise some of you that Governor Atia, the last Republican to serve in this role, has been a source of inspiration as I prepare to take on this great responsibility. He too was a former legislator with deep knowledge of our state budget, and we are both firsts. He, the first elected governor of Arab descent in the United States, and me, the first openly lesbian governor in the United States, along with the new governor of Massachusetts. Governor Kotek also pledged to make bold action happen on two big issues facing Oregon. The first is a lack of housing. For the future of our economy and our state, we must take on our housing crisis at the scale needed to solve it. So on my first full day in office tomorrow, I'm moving forward on two promises on this front. First, I'm signing an executive order that will address the underlying challenge facing our state. We need more housing. My executive order will establish an ambitious statewide housing production target of more than 36,000 new homes per year. And people, that's an 80% increase over recent construction trends. We'll be watching closely to see how she plans to make that happen and how much it's going to cost taxpayers. Governor Kotek also said she will move fast on homelessness. Second, I am, decla I am declaring a homelessness state of emergency. Our state's response must meet the urgency of the humanitarian crisis we are facing. A lot of good work is already underway in communities across our state, and thank you for that. Still, we need everyone to keep bringing forward solutions. 
And to that end, I am proposing an urgent $130 million investment that will help at least another 1,200 Oregonians who are experiencing unsheltered homelessness move off the streets within a year. The governor said she will call on lawmakers to fashion a package of spending to make that pledge happen. My back of the napkin math shows that spending $130 million on 1,200 people is about $108,000 per person. So that's definitely one we're going to keep an eye on as well.